Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Space Quest V by Sierra Online. In our last episode, we have picked up the trash from Gangularis and PU, two planets in this quadrant. And we are on our way, or we'll be heading out shortly, to go to Kiss Your Ass Goodbye. A planet... Well, we'll see why it's called that here in a moment. Um... Yeah, kiss your ass goodbye. Let's see. Previous episode, we also picked up Spike, a acid piddling face hugger of some flavor, and picked up a unusual transmission on a Starcon frequency between a gentleman named Maggot and another gentleman named Dung Heap. Lay in a course. We're going to go to KU. If you're looking at the um. Horse, horoscope um, copy protection sheet in the manual. It's called KU. And it's 20011. Probably 2001 A Space Odyssey reference there. And it has to be five digits, so. Coordinates locked in, so we're going to get underway. Light speed, I sir. And I don't know if there's any new things to talk to Drool about. What did, how'd that message sound to you, Drool? Sounds like somebody was trying to unload a bunch of hot stereos, Captain. Why would anyone in Sarkon do something like that? I haven't the faintest idea. What's with Flo? Why is she so bitter towards me? Don't take it personally, sir. Flo recently separated from her 18th husband and is understandably distraught. She's handed down on men in general. Wow, an 18-time loser. Never call your crew member a loser. Want to make something of it, Flyboy? I've divorced better men than you. See what I mean? I was just wondering, what's it like not having a mouth? Excuse me? I mean, how do you eat? How do you kiss? Do you vibrate those gill thingies or rub your elbow's eyes together or something? Not everyone keeps their elementary orifices in the same place, Captain. And that's a reference to Star Trek VI. Um, in the Ruapente scene. Go watch that movie if you haven't seen it before. It is excellent. What do you make of that transmission, Flo? I don't know, sir. The content was really strange, especially since a Starcon command frequency was used. Can you pin down the source? Afraid not, Captain. They were using a metamorphic coding algorithm and a frequency hopping pretty rapidly. It was all I could do to stay with them during the transmission. How did you ever intercept... Oh, never mind. I don't think I want to know. This one's just a bad idea to say. And there's the rundown of the last words. Let's see what Flo says anyway, we've got time. Pig. What? You, excuse me, you pig, sir. Yep, bad idea. What was that? We've been hit by a proton torpedo. A tractor beam has locked onto us, Captain. We're being pulled in. But by whom? Get us out of here, Drool. Helm not responding, sir. Weapon system's inoperative. Of course there are. Alert, warning, uh-oh. We're being held, sir. I'm putting it on screen. Roger Wilco, under the authority of the ERGS, it sounds like you're the glass statue, something or other, blah, blah, blah. The irrelevant law citation. I hereby command you to beam down and surrender your person for arrest. Failure to comply with these instructions will result in the destruction of your ship and everyone aboard. Looks like the Jipazoid Novelty Company still hasn't forgotten about that little piece of mail fraud you pulled on them back in Space Quest 2. I thought all this was over with after I had run with, run with, that, with Arnoid on the planet Fleabot a few years back. You thought wrong, human. It just goes to show you never send a mandroid to do a womanoid's work. Can we come to some kind of arrangement? Beam down to the planet, your body will be disassembled and sold to various biotechnology firms to pay interest in collection fees. I'm scanning your ship. Any attempt to escape or subterfuge will result in the immediate annihilation of your ship and crew. You have five standard timings before I destroy your ship, Roger Wilco. I think she means business, Captain. I agree, and could you hurry up and beam down, sir, before she gets impatient and blows us all up? What support from my crew?
Oh, we beat Arnoid. Well, she's not going to get me without a fight. Whatever you say, sir, it's been nice knowing you. Maybe Cliffy can have some ideas for helping. Captain, that torpedo knocked out our warp drive. We're a sitting duck for whoever that is out there. By the way, why did they shoot at us? An Annihilator android is after me for something I did a long, long time ago. Cliffy, she's starting to blow up the whole the ship if I don't be down to the surface. What'd you do, sir? Mail? No, nothing like that. I ordered something through the mail and forgot to pay for it. Mail fraud is a very serious crime, Captain. I wish you luck. Such support for my crew. Alright, to use the transporter, we stand here, and because Cliffy installed a voice activated doohickey, you click the, the um, speak icon on that particular display there on the right side. Roger says energize and beams down to the planet. Alright, and meanwhile. Oh, great, it can cloak. Alright, so there's a pool here. Babbling waterfall splashes noisily into a pool at the base of the imposing granite cliffs. In class at the academy, they teach that caves like this are of volcanic origin. It's not that you have the least idea what that means, but you always thought the phrase has a, the phrase has a nice ring to it. This looks like every other sheltered clearing with the like three caves of waterfall and pond you've ever seen. To you, Roger Wilco, space hero extraordinary. Trio of caves penetrate the base of this massive, the massive granite cliffs, cliff wall of this sheltered clearing. Those small caves are all caps. It's kind of hard to read. All right, we come here, and there's another cave here. We can go up here, and we're in this area up at the top of that waterfall now. Go through this cave. And we see the, the trees fluctuating, and now she can cloak too, which is really fun. See her splashing through the water under the waterfall. There she is in the waterfall. Rogers come out on top. We can jump over here. Come out here, and she appears there and starts shooting. Phew, that was too close. You'd better keep moving, Raj. That WD-40 android won't give up until you're a smoldering pile of hero salsa. Her second hit, her second shot always kills you. And the fact that she has cloaking capabilities only makes matters worse. I wouldn't give a tin buckazoid for your life right now, Raj. We can jump back <coughs> over there. In the cave. The other cave, we can see the stuff fl fluctuating down there. Instead of going through this cave, then we're going to go off on this side of the screen, which takes us to the same place that we just were. But, um, the other side, we can crawl into the log out the other side. Banana like fruit clusters grow from several of the trees in this area. We're going to want one in a few minutes, but we can't reach them. That's not what I told you to do, Roger. No! And Roger's doing his best buoy impression. And the stick is gradually floating to the side of the pool instead of towards the lower waterfall, which is totally realistic and physically likely. Back up here, back through there. And we're going to use our stick here to fetch 
There we go. You managed to grab one of the pieces of fruit and liberate it from the swinging cluster. Then, shoving it into your pocket, you add to the increasingly impressive bulge in your uniform. I think this is a place to a George Takai style oh my would be appropriate. Alright, so we're going to go here. And back up. Back up. And we see WD-40 reappearing. She enters the cave as Roger climbs out and jumps over. We're going to climb up top here, maybe. that. There we go. We have to watch this every single time we do this. Jump across. Ah! Climb up. And we're going to use a stick on this boulder. In a very wily coyote style. Looks like you've bowled her over with your ingenuity, Rod. She's cooling her jets at the bottom of that pool below. Nice work. Okay, and we're going to go down to that pool below. Eventually. By stretching your limited ingenuity to the fullest, you've managed to knock out WD-40's cloaking mechanism. Downside is now she's really ticked off. Okay. Now, I think we need to go here. I know you're here somewhere, Wilco. Come out and face me like a woman. It's your destiny. And it's something that I thought, that I'm sure they thought was funny back in the 90s. We're going to take this banana. And do things to WD40. And she goes boom. If you remember back on the StarCon aptitude test, there was that question about what to do in face with the killer android. And the answer had something to do with um, banana and silk. This cave here goes to this room here where the, um, the sky is blue and the air is as fresh as a Martian daisy. This is where WD-40's ship landed. And there's a piece of WD-40 there. And that's the standard, you're not close enough message. Hey, Captain, well, I'll be. You're still in one piece. The ship's scanners picked up a large explosion, and we drew lots to see who got to come down and collect your remains. And you lost. No, I won, but I'm relieved to see you anyway, sir. It will, it will save a lot of uncomfortable explanations back at Starcon. I see you got the robot's head there, sir. I've been looking for it. Now I'll beam you back up to the ship and then finish picking up the pieces down here.
you think you heard Cliffy beaming in, it might be a good idea to give him that android head. Hey Cliffy, I have something for you. I just wanted you to get ahead. Wahahaha. Your sense of humor is surpassed only by your captaining skills, sir. Here I have something you might be interested in. And he slowly shuffles over. I was putting the WD-40 unit back together, and I had a couple pieces left over. Thought you might like a souvenir. Here you go. Thanks, I guess. Why are you putting that back together? Did it just try to kill me? Maybe we should have a discussion with Mr. Clifford about this development. Maybe not. Wait up, Captain. I'll go with you. Hey, why do you beam in here? I wonder if this little device had anything to do with it. Little device? A leftover part from Cliffy's overhaul of WD-40, the Annihilator Android. That's an interesting idea. These rocky crags jut upward from a, th a thousand feet from the valley floor. Kindly watch your step. The anti-gravity lift awaits to carry you up into the ship's interior. Go on without me, Captain. I'm not gonna make it. All right. WD-40 ship. WD-40 ship has a Spartan and totally utilitarian interior, indicative of the single-mindedness with which the ship's pilot formerly pursued her victims. This baby is probably rigged with all sorts of lethally effective security devices. Oh sure, narrator, you're just paranoid. Let's see if we can hotwire this buggy. Are you sure you want to do that? And the sure is in a different color. That's always a good sign. Zowie, the electromagnetic, electromagnetic security system has reduced you to a stick of hero jerky. The very nondescript nature of this panel, which doesn't set it apart from anything else in the ship, piques your interest. All right. Aha, this must be where the cloaking device is housed. It's some sort of locking mechanism. This should be easy to crack open. The latch won't move. Uh-oh. It appears that you have triggered some sort of alarm. Better get this thing out. Get this thing and get out of here fast. Good job, now get out of here. And it's not going to do that automatically. I got it, let's move before this thing blows. Oh wow, Chief, did that hurt? That looked really painful. You okay? Ah, rats, I missed it. I'll get around to installing this device as soon as I finish my repairs to the android. 
Are you sure that fixing her is a good idea, Cliffy? I am still not sold on the whole plan. Trust me, sir, just because you two had a slight misunderstanding, there is no reason she can't become a valuable member of the crew. Slight misunderstanding? Cliffy, she tried to kill me. Well, there is that, but I'm pretty sure I can crank down the le her lethality setting a couple notches. Afterwards, she'll probably just want to beat you severely. That's not going to cut it, Cliffy. I suppose you're right, sir. It's probably kind of hard to captain a ship if you've been beaten senseless. But I do think it would help keep you on your toes if she took a random swing at you now and then. I don't want her to so much as scowl at me, Cliffy. All right, sir, have it your way. That's why I'm the captain. So, the timed text boxes here are annoying because if you click right as it clears one, you clear the second one as well. So anyway, I might fix that in post, I might not. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to give Cliffy the cloaking device. All right, so our mission was such a dedicated crew, always on top of things and not playing games when they're not here. Then again, what else would they be doing while I'm not here? So, nothing there. We're supposed to be going. We finished our mission, Captain. Let's take some R and R at the space bar. All right, space bar is at coordinate 6, 9... You know, Captain, I could really use a break. How about heading to the space room for a quick drink? 6, 9, 8, 6, 9. And it pressed enter, which triggered where the mouse was pointing. 6, 9, 8, 6, 9. Enter. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, light speed. Is that set up new sessions there? All right down here on the control panel, we didn't finish going through this stuff earlier. There's monitors and displays up at top. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Uh, regular speed. And I think we need to do a standard orbit here. Standard orbit I. Let's party. Last one to the station is Rotten Ore at Ovum. Lake cleared out quick. Hey, wait for me, you jerks. And we want Spike. Don't ask why we want Spike, but we want Spike. Excuse me, Captain, but I see an old buddy of mine over there by the bar. Uh-oh, here we go again. Alright, we will explore the space bar in more detail in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and tune in next time for more Let's Play Space Quest 5. Wait a second, that guy up there looks like Captain Quirk, and that guy looks like the guy we saw on the, um, great communication ship. He now become a port. But anyway, thanks for watching. Tune in next time as we continue exploring the space bar in the space, space quest 5.